Moment with a Master is presented by Forest Manufacturing. Saw blades for smooth, quiet, precise cuts, guaranteed. Roy Underhill, he makes the complex look simple. Roy opens up to the Highland Woodworker in our very first Moment with a Master. Pittsburgh, North Carolina is a charming community 35 miles west of Raleigh and historic town where the hustle and bustle of fast-paced city life has been replaced by a shake and a tap. In the heart of this small southern town sits a small workshop, a place of learning taught by one of the biggest names in woodworking today. How many pieces of wood have we got here? Author, educator, <laughs> TV star, master showman, How many and master woodwright, Roy. Underhill. Was it? Is it? Yeah, that's the thing. That's what uh, Rubeau says, although it's movable, uh, it's one and the same piece. On seul et même pièce. Now, I think it was, you guys got the French translation there. Do you, had you translate it back into the original French, as I asked? So, what? Joshua, would you do verse three of Rubo, please, for us? <laughs> you won't find power tools at this unique workshop. Every project created here is done by hand or self-powered machinery. Roy Underhill is an authority in early American and European woodworking. So if you're like Joshua and your French isn't up to par, don't worry. Roy usually speaks in plain English. Your English pig dog. Your, your, mo <laughs> your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries. <laughs> Roy's quick wit, vast knowledge, and amazing storytelling ability makes him a natural teacher. But even the very best teachers have to be taught by someone. Roy didn't have to look far. You could say being right is in his blood. See, I'm a TV woodworker, and uh, I learned the trade from my great uncle because he went back. He was a radio woodworker. And, what? Uh, yeah, so he'd teach dovetailing over the radio. No, you and you, furniture you, you building. No, kidding. no, no. He taught uh, furniture building, and uh, it was what, you know, he'd do Chippendale High Boy on a radio series, which they thought was going to be really difficult because you couldn't show anything. But then they realized they didn't have to build a damn thing. You know, all they had to do was make the sound effects. So they go, wow, that drawer came out perfect there, didn't it? Great. You know, so this was wonderful back in, so that's who I learned a lot of this uh, trade as a TV woodworker from. William Underhill sold Shakespeare, the Shakespeare family, the house that he lived in, the new place. Uh, so I got the, the uh, and Shakespeare wrote a bunch of th uh, references to that. <laughs> There's a line in Shakespeare that says, uh, he shall join you as they join Wayne's green timber and one of you shall prove a shrunk panel and like green timber, warp, warp. So I think he's talking about bad woodworking, pulling apart, and I feel like my family is inspired, even Shakespeare, to write. So that's the oldest underhill in this business. Uh, and then I, growing up in Washington, D.C., way up in the mountainous part, so I'm up in the hills in D.C., and my mama I always take my axe to school and do what I could on the way home to bring back something interesting. And uh, it was just constant recession. Never could get a job, and so I had to keep doing what I liked doing. The Woodwright Shop on PBS is Roy's own masterpiece theater. He spends a half hour teaching and learning from some of the most notable names in woodworking. His show has been on the air for more than 30 years. Hey, hello again. Welcome back to the Woodwright Shop. I'm Roy Underhill. Roy recalls the day when he walked into the North Carolina public television station with more than just an idea in his head. You could say he had a firm grip on what his show should feature. I walked in with an ax and my tool chest and the whole thing, <laughs> full suspender regalia. And, you know, and it said, uh, this is, if y'all don't do it, somebody else will, because this is, uh, this is it. 
and uh, I had the sales pitch. And I, but I think, you know, I had all the arguments about how this would work, how this is, you know, familiar, it's in everybody's background, but here's a new approach to it for the way most people live right now. Uh, but I think it was the fact that I had an ax in my hand the whole time I was talking <laughs> that did it, that may have pushed it over for me. So that's my hint to folks who want to push a series, you know, take an ax with you to the uh, pitch meeting. It's always good. Roy is a busy guy. He has a show to host, a shop to keep, and a school to teach. This is where he and his wife slow down. His home is the old McBain grist mill in Graham, North Carolina, a land with plenty of resources and relics from the past. I'm not sure when this was built. They say 1850, but looking at the machinery, it looks like 1870. Because it didn't have a an over you know kind of water wheel, the very picturesque wooden one. Yeah. It was a uh, turbine here. And I got to be careful with the ice here on the mill race. Uh, when there's a flood, it's just all kind of timber coming down the creek, coming around like uh, freight trains around the bend, and then they all end up down here in this huge log jam. All these logs, the walnuts, the, the red cedars, the, uh, those, well, those are the two you want. I mean, right, but, uh, yes. Uh, they all start coming down here, and I have to get down here in the flood, waiting for these logs to come down and try and spot whether they're real straight. That's a walnut. Sure. You, you, you usually tell. And you got to kind of grab it out of the flood mm -hmm. and direct it up here and kind of keep it. But if you go out a little too far, it's like, I mean, you're gone. Yeah. Uh, so you don't cut any snags, but it's just the coolest, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a very frightening thing. So the current but also very would cool. really take you around oh, the yeah, bend. You'd be, you'd be dead. It, it, yeah. That. You'd be dead yeah. in no time. So I don't recommend that again for students. <laughs> but, you know, I can get out here and uh, try and direct these logs in. That's one of the wonderful things I like about getting the students out here. They get to right. see why America is such a, you know, the woodworking heritage here hundreds of different kinds of species and they're, they're, each one of them just you know is just right for something right and uh, they get to see those here you know and, and uh, just get more connected with that great American tradition yeah the so, purpose in, in in each species yeah well or yeah or, <laughs> or, or what we what we say is <laughs> its purpose what we say is its purpose yeah its purpose is just to be a tree and be left yeah. alone yeah. <laughs> yeah I think you're right there. yeah Rachel Marie. Oh, Rachel Marie, that's my daughter. Of course, this is a, a little uh, a dinghy. Uh, not exactly what I want to do here. I do want to do wooden boat building here because we've got uh, well, we've got, we've got five miles of mill dam backed up here. Uh, but we we'll do wooden boat building. But sure. I want to do is uh, indigenous, uh, you know, farm pond skiffs. You know, yeah. everybody on their life list, they got to make a little wooden boat, a little wooden rowboat. Roy lets nothing go to waste. This rustic workshop will soon be transformed into a new school for craftsmen interested in the art of blacksmithing. And we'll be felling trees out around here, hauling them in. Uh, the pit sawing, hewing, an you know, introduction to timber frame and log building. This is just one of the week-long classes. And I do hope, you know, to get the boat building down the way, so. That's It'll great. be all right, yeah, it's that kind of, kind of. Kind of <laughs> tying together all the resources here. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. well, that, that's a big thing. I think even the, the chair building classes, um, Ailey Bazzari teaches with me, uh, the Windsor chair making classes. Uh, we start with a log, at the start of the class. So you start, you know, here's your log, <laughs> here are the tools, you know, you're gonna have a chair at the end of the week. So we can do that, but it'd be nice to take it that next step where we go out and we drop the tree. Okay, here's your tree. At the end of the week, you're gonna have a, a chair to take home with you. Working with wood is more than just craftsmanship, according to Roy. It's human nature. This is such a part of the way we evolved. It is, yeah, it, it, it is, we just, you know, it became human beings because we were working wood and understanding the grain and looking at the way the blade works. I mean, this has just been with us for hundreds of hundreds of thousands of years. That's why we're human. That's why we do, you know, we can do this, these kind of things today that we do these marvelous things. But still, you know, that kind of the original music that we all played, 
you know, started fading out. And people saying, wait a minute, where, where'd that go? And now, you know, people start to realize where it was. It was working with hand tools, with the wood, with that sound, with the smell, and all that connection. You just, you can't get away from it. You know, we can't get away from it as, as human beings. And that's what's kind of neat. People are admitting that, say, this is always going to be a part of us. Another tidbit of information about Roy Underhill is he wears the same hat that he wore on the very first show. If you want to find out more about Roy Underhill's classes and schedule, then look on our website under Moment with a Master at thehighlandwoodworker.com.